Jews, and yet they were afraid of other Jews. 
perhaps their own actions and thoughts during the suffering and crucifixion of their brothers and sisters had made them even afraid of themselves. Suddenly, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Out of that numbness and shock, they had not recognized their Lord until he showed them his wounds. Now they were amazed, and now Jesus' words of peace be with you were understood and felt. Jesus then breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This community has been given the same task as we have today. When Jesus breathed on those disciples, however many there were and who all they were, he breathed on us as well. From this group of frightened men and women, a strong faith was forged. The Acts of Luke shed light on the early community of the church and how they continued Jesus' teachings. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. These people understood how to love one another in community, and great grace was upon them all. From the first letter of John, we learn of the declarations from community as well. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the world of the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Not only does community have to come together with itself, but community must also reach out to those who have not yet experienced this bond of faith and love in order to be complete. Community cannot, cannot be a secret society. Thomas, with his faith and his simple words of love and awe, respect and devotion, bridged the community that actually lived with Jesus and those of us who have come after and continue to breathe in the life and words of Christ. Back to the story now. When Thomas enters the house and is stuck forever with the nickname of Doubting Thomas, we have long remembered the story about him. He is, after all, one of the few original disciples with whom we can envision. We do have Peter and John, the brief story about the sons of Zebedee, James and John, we know Matthew was a tax collector, and of course Judas Iscariot and his role. We have others' names, but no real description of them. Thomas, however, is a favorite one of mine, so I am a bit biased. I grew up in the parish of St. Thomas in Plymouth, Indiana. I can still see the altar gates with a metal spear, symbol of his death, pressed against the builder's square, symbol of his building up the church. Remember, Thomas was not with his community when Jesus first appeared to that frightened group. He missed out because he was away from them. When he is told by his friends that Jesus had been there, can you imagine the emotional heartache for Thomas to have missed his Lord? Haven't we often said the similar defiant words that we won't believe unless we actually see what has happened? The next time, in that house, Thomas is with his community. Not alone, not isolated, but with his community. Jesus returns and Thomas can actually see him. Jesus offers the greeting of peace again and reveals to Thomas 
that he knows what Thomas had said. Can you see these two together with the others circling around them? The doors are shut, but apparently not locked <coughs> this time. Thomas is not a defiant man, though. Jesus tells him, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Immediately, immediately Thomas answers, my Lord and my God. He has no hesitation. He does not actually touch the wounds because he has no need. Just as his community had responded to Jesus when he had shown him the wounds, Thomas knew. To those who have listened to this story, to those who have come after the resurrection, to those of us who have never physically seen Jesus, but know him in our hearts, Jesus said, we are blessed who have not seen and yet have come to believe. For Thomas, Christ's presence was enough, and Thomas spoke the words, thoughts, and feelings of his heart. Dad was my first parish priest. He instructed us confirmants, the term used for those seeking confirmation. In those days, we were not allowed to receive Holy Communion until after we had received the sacrament of confirmation. Dad told us to take these words of Thomas to heart and to inwardly say them whenever the elements of the Holy Eucharist, the bread and cup of wine, were raised. I have been doing this for over 54 years now, and each time these words cause a deep response to reading. In a sermon about this reading from John, Dad spoke about these words of Thomas, and this is how I'm going to close. Supremely. The words are fitting words of worship as we receive the sacred body and the blood at the altar. Appropriately, we may say, my Lord and my God, at the beginning and end of our daily prayers. Suitably, we may use the words of St. Thomas as he recognized the fact that Christ had indeed risen from the tomb in all our expressions of thanksgiving to God. Desperately, we may pray, my Lord and my God, as life sometimes momentarily shatters us and drives us to our knees in pain and even sudden despair. Triumphantly, we may make Thomas' words our own at Easter tide, my Lord and my God, for in the faith behind those supreme words of adoration is we found our Lord, our very life, and our eternal Easter joy. So once again, Alleluia, Christ is risen!